Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. My name is Devin Knight, and in this module, we're going to be looking at the Box and Whiskers chart by Brad Sarsfield. Now, you may remember in our previous module, we looked at the Box and Whiskers chart also designed by a different developer. In this module, we're going to be talking less about the specifics about how Box and Whiskers charts work because we spent a lot of time on that in our last module. In this module, though, however, we are going to spend some time focused on this particular type of visual and how it can be used and how it's different, and really some pros and cons of this one versus the previous one we showed in the previous module. All right, so what's uh, special about this one? Well, it does actually, one thing I like about this visual is it plots every item that you have or every individual data point that you have from your data set shows up on that, uh, from each series against the y-axis. So each data point you will see has a circle devoted to it on Brad's box and Worcester's chart. You'll also see that the quartiles are separated at the 5th, 25th, 75th, and 95th percentile. That's where the beginning lines, ending lines, and then the box begins. And that's how Brad has kind of separated his. Now, the nice thing about how Brad has designed this is you can actually adjust the quartiles to what you would like them to be. And that's different from our previous box and whisker chart that we looked at, where you could kind of choose between three standard types of box and whisker chart types. Here, you actually have a lot of flexibility where you can actually make them very specific to what you would like to see them as. So you have that flexibility to manually adjust where the quartiles begin and end in this visual. All right, we've already talked about who developed this one, so let's go ahead and get into next where you can go find it and how you can download it and start using it. All right, so our first step here is to go to the Power BI Custom Visuals Gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, you'll be redirected to the site that I'm looking at now. And you're going to scroll down until you find the box and whiskers charts. You'll notice there's two of them here. We already talked about the one here. We're now going to focus in on Brad's. So you'll download and select the box and whiskers chart by Brad Sarsfield. You might want to read the description, but you can also download the sample that has a couple good examples of the box and whiskers chart being used. And then you're really what you need to do is hit this yellow button to download the visual so that we can use it in our example today. So go ahead and do that. Once you've downloaded that, though, you're going to go into the Power BI desktop, which I've just launched here. And we're going to go connect to the same exact data set that we did in the last example. And we'll just kind of walk through how this box and whiskers chart is slightly different in the design here. So we're going to start by going to connect to our data set. And if you remember our data set from the previous module, it was all around miles per gallon and makes and models of cars and the miles per gallon that each of them get. So we're going to start by going up to the top here to the Get Data section. And we'll select Excel as where we're going to pull our data in from. And the data that we're going to find here is going to be available to you if you look below this video or if you've uh, purchased the class here. You can also find the vehicle MPG Excel file. So I'm going to select that Excel file and hit Open. And once I do that, you'll see it brings me to the Navigator pane where I can select the spreadsheet that's inside of that Excel workbook, and you can see the data that we're about to pull in here. All right, so I'll go ahead and hit Load to bring this data now into the Power BI desktop. And it's going to connect and bring that data in. And just so that we can kind of see what the data looks like, I'm going to bring this in here as a table as well, just so we can get a good idea of what the data looks like. Okay, I'll even increase the text size of that a little bit so we know what the data looks like as we're starting to work with it here. So I'm going to bump this up a couple points here. There we go. All right, now to get started with this box and Worcester's chart, we're going to need to start by importing the custom visual. We'll do that by going up to the ellipses right here and select Import from File. You'll select Import a custom visual. You can also, by the way, delete custom visuals here if you haven't seen that before. And we'll select that we want to import our custom visual, and you can hit OK to import pass. This is just letting you know you're importing a third-party app into Power BI. All right, so we're going to go find where we downloaded that custom visual. So find wherever you downloaded yours. Mine is right here. And I'll go ahead and select that box in Worcester's chart and hit open. That's now imported that custom visual into the Power BI desktop for me. You'll notice, by the way, the icons of the two box in Worcester's charts are very similar, but they're slightly different in that the icon is kind of inverted based on which one you've selected. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one here, the one done by Brad. I'm going to make it a little larger as we start to work on it. And I'm going to bring in our make and our MPG here. Now the first thing that you should note that's different between the two box and whiskers charts that we looked at is you kind of had a multiplier that you could drop in here as well or a category that you can drop in here with the previous box and whiskers chart. So I could have actually dropped in the model field that I have in here and it would give me a new box and whisker for each of the different make, um, uh, makes of cars that I have. So that's actually how we view, viewed it before is we had Honda and Toyota separated out into two separate box and whiskers. You can do that here as well. It just depends on how you're looking at the data. The way that we're looking at the data right now is it's actually summing and aggregating all the MPG up into a single value. So we're actually visualizing here every single value summarized up into each other, which doesn't really make sense as a way to look at this from a box and whiskers perspective. 
usually what you're using box and whiskers for is to be able to see a distribution of your values and where they land across a larger series of values. So what you want to do here to be able to actually use this box and whiskers properly for, for this example at least, is you want to come over to the field list, the field well here, and change the MPG field that we have, and you're going to hit the down arrow next to it, and we're going to tell it that we don't really want to summarize MPG. We actually want to say do not summarize, and that way it'll show each instance of a record on our box and whiskers chart. Because again, we're trying to see the distribution of values, not all the values summed up together. So if I change this to do not summarize, you'll see that it significantly changed how the chart looks here, and we actually have two different box and whisker starts appearing here. We have Honda and Toyota now listing here separately, all within the same visual. And you're able to see here each of the individual visuals by each of these circles that appear here. So you can see here's my max value up in the top here. Honda has a 36 as its max. Its lower value is lower extreme is 22 MPG. And then all of these other dots here represent, except for the blue one, we'll talk about that here in a moment. All these other dots here represent each individual data point that I have in my data set. So it's actually showing here, this is one of the things I like about Brad's visual, is it gives you a, a circle for each of the data points that you have inside of that series. So we're able to see that here. Now the, or, the orange or red values that you see here, those circles represent outliers. So those are the ones that fell outside of the realm of our quartiles, quartile one and quartile four here. So because it fell outside of those realms, it's, it's showing up here as an outlier. All the ones that are kind of in the blue hollowed out circle, those are just kind of regular ones that fell within our range. You'll also see that the average or the mean here is showing up as the blue, that's a little bit offset. That's your median, your mean, excuse me, your mean or your average value shows up there. Your median, however, shows up as the center line. We learned that in our last demonstration of how the box and whisker starts work. So that solid line in the middle of the box, that represents your median value that you have in this data set, okay? All right, so that gives you an idea of how these work. Now you saw here, there's different ways you can play around with this. I mentioned in the slide deck that you can actually adjust where the quartiles begin and end. Right now they begin and end at the 95th and the 5th percentile. So this would be the different values that you see here. And you can actually adjust these by going underneath the format paintbrush here. So if I go to the format paintbrush in the section over here on the right, most of the things that you have here that are available are pretty standard. You can't really, there's not a whole lot of special configuration in here outside of the box options. And inside the box options, this is where you can actually start to adjust the quartiles that are being used. So you can adjust the first quartile. Instead of being at the fifth percent, maybe you want it to start out zero percent. You can actually do some adjustments in here if you wanted to, to be able to visualize that differently. So you can kind of adjust and uh, play around with the values. And you can see as I change that, as I change that value, you can see it actually adjusts here and it changes from the first value showing up as at the fifth percent to actually the first quartile beginning at the very first value here. So my quartile begins at the 22nd value, and you can adjust those pretty easily just by coming in and playing around with the format paintbrush section here. You can certainly adjust any of the other quartile sections if you want to, but these are kind of standards that are in here by default. You can certainly adjust them if you see that it might make sense. So for example, if I set the fourth quartile to one, you're gonna see that that's 100%, and it's gonna push all the way to the top where you find the very top right now outlier value. So if I hit one here, you can see it pushes that up to the very top. So that kind of gives you an idea of how to use this. You can adjust this and you have some flexibility of how you want to be able to visualize the quartiles. One thing that I saw very nice in the Microsoft sample that I thought was a smart thing to do is as you start to adjust the different quartile settings, you may actually want to go into the visual title here, maybe turn on the title, and in the title itself, you may want to indicate what the quartile settings are. So I might tell it here that Q1 is set to 0.05, I might tell it that Q2, and I'm not going to do all these, but Q2 is set to 0.25, and I can kind of visualize that here in the chart title, and I might want to make it black and center it and make it a little larger, and then that's a good way to be able to visualize what the quartile settings are at at this moment. And I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and finish this off because I'm going to save this so that you'll have it available to you as well whenever you're done watching this video. But that's a good idea. It gives you a good way to be able to visualize to whoever's consuming this, what the quartile settings are placed at whenever they're viewing it. All right, so I'm just going to wrap this up. I'll say quartile 4 is set to 0.95. That's an equal sign there. There we go. And I think that way it's very easy to see and it's clear what I'm viewing inside of the Box and Whistler chart. Again, if you're really learning what the Box and Whistler chart does, I recommend you watch the previous video I had on this where I spent a lot of time kind of talking through the basics of how Box and Whiskers works. Hope you guys enjoyed this session. Look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next video. Thanks a lot.